Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Alright, pack one, pick one. Decent rare, Life Chanter is definitely a good one. It is in white, which is not my uh, preferred color here, but uh, the power level is definitely there. Got some decent uncommons in the Fen Lurker, gets the cards, and then later in the game is still a relevant threat, unlike, let's say, a Burglar Rat that's still a 1 1. This actually tends to trade up or deal some uh, serious damage. And then looking at the commons, the best one's probably like a Sanitarium Skeleton. Sprite is okay, like there's some playable cards for sure. But um, nothing quite that I would take over Fun Lurker. So it's basically between Life Chanter and Fun Lurker. I think Life Chanter is a better card, but it is in a worse color. But uh, the Life Chanter at least is still splashable. And there is a little bit of mana fixing in the sets. So you can potentially get away with the splash. So... Given that's the case, I don't mind taking the Life Chanter here. No white cards that we can realistically hope to wheel, maybe the Foot Soldier, although haven't really ended up with uh, enough Foot Soldiers to make them work yet. Alright, this is probably a Chandra pick. Best card in the pack by quite a bit. Uh, Altar is also a powerful build around, but it is a build around. You can just throw this in any deck and have it be good. Boreal's okay. Um, Diamond Knights can also be decent in some decks. No commons outside of uh, the Boreal that really stand out. So yeah, let's take a Chandra and see where we end up. Right, I'm ready to fight. So currently red white, but don't have to stay that way. Could easily splash the Life Chanter, or abandon one of our colors if something better comes along. I am a pretty big fan of the Goblin Smuggler. Has a lot of neat synergies in this deck, especially with the Brawler at 4 mana that can still get additional power after attacking and being unblockable. And also great if we end up in black with the uh, Audacious Thief, for instance. And the other cards that jump out, Leaf Kindred's okay if we want a bit of ramp. There's no great white cards. I think I'm down to take the Smuggler here. And there's a Brawler. So that's kind of the combo with the Smuggler. It's also a pretty late Weaponsmith, fourth pick. And uh, yeah, the bows still go way later than they should. So we could turn into a Weaponsmith deck. So it's basically Weaponsmith vs. Brawler, maybe Aerial Assault as like a distant third, I think, as a good white card to go with our Life Chanter. Let's take a Brawler. Alright, so best card in this pack is probably the Silverback, but a Spitfire has a lot of potential too, synergizes with our Pyroman or uh, with our, well, Brawler and Pyromancer and the Smuggler too, so just plays well with all our cards so far, and uh, especially if we can pick up some Chandra's Outrages, some Shocks, then the Spitfire gets even better. So, seems like the pick here over potentially a better card, but um, in another color. Alright, another Brawler, so I don't see a reason to deviate from Reds so far. Uh, other good cards in the pack, there's like Unsummon, Skeleton, but uh, let's stick to red. Alright, so the first pack where we don't really have a good red card. Not a fan of the Raptor, one toughness dies to the bow too easily. So we're looking at maybe Metropolis Sprite, on off chance we end up in blue. Could just take like a Sentinel as a weak white card in case we end up red-white. Um, maybe a Portal of Sanctuary, definitely some neat combos with this card as well. I think I'm liking the sprite the most here. Alright, another smuggler seems excellent. Huh. Could we make it work? Probably not, but uh, I could still take it on the off chance. I've got two smugglers so far. Alternatively, I could take Sanitarium Skeleton, I could take a Speculative Raise the Alarm or a Foot Soldier. 
So if we do end up red-white aggro, getting enough foot soldiers would be nice, although we already have Spitfire 2 smugglers at 3, so maybe I would just prefer to raise the alarm to give us a 2 mana play, and uh, potentially play as well with go white type cards. Um, the chances of a ringleader making the deck are pretty small, like there's not a lot of goblins in the set outside of Smuggler that I would consider great, because by itself a 4 mana 2-2 two, two haste is not what you want, it does have to find you at least one other goblin to be a reasonable card, and we already have a decent chunk of 4 drops, so it's probably between a raise and foot soldier at this point. Both of these could be serviceable, but this requires a bit more setup. So let's take a raise the alarm. Pretty happy with the spitter. Nice one drop. Elementals to start our curve with. Maybe we'll play a stone golem. So white hasn't seemed particularly open, although as I say that we get a 12th pick aerial assault, so who knows. The only color we are guaranteed to be here is red. Could be red-white, could be blue-red, could be red-green if we open a great green card. We'll see. Well, blue-red it is. Agent of Treachery is uh, definitely among the more powerful rares in the set. There's also some decent red cards here. Shock would be a nice one. Uh, Audacious Thief in Black. There's some okay white cards and Ace and Razy Alarm, but uh, Agent it is. Not our Chandra seems nice. Don't really see a reason to take anything else. Can also ramp us into Agent for what it's worth. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. All right, so now we've got a more interesting decision. Probably gonna end up with Amber Cats if I had to guess. Uh, we need more 2-drops, it's got great elemental synergies, counts for Brawler, ramps us into Chandra and Brawler on turn 3. Unsummon's pretty neat too, has some good synergy with Agent of Treachery, besides being a nice tempo play. Can hope to wield a Smuggler. Um, Eagle seems a bit ambitious. So I think we'll take the Amber Cat and then hope to wield the... Uh, Smuggler here, even the Marauder's Axe would be okay. Another Thief. Snow Great blue cards, the best red cards. Yeah, we're playing best of one, so I don't think I want to main deck Fry since we don't have a way of discarding it if it's dead. So, like Aeronauts, it's not exciting. There's usually better 4 drops, but uh, like if I don't get any additional 4 drops, I could potentially see playing one Aeronauts, but uh, it's not amazing for sure. I have a strong incentive to be blue with Agents, we've got a Sprite already, but blue hasn't seemed particularly open, so we just gotta get kind of the scraps of the blue cards, maybe hope to get them early, but we could still be like heavy monorets with just a touch of blue for late game Agents. Like my white cards aren't great, Soulmander doesn't really fit into this deck at all. Not a huge fan of the Glaring Aegis. So the only good white cards are one Assault and a Life Chanter. Like Raise the Alarm is kind of whatever. Yeah, and Assault is also pretty bad in an aggro deck because the opponent's going to have untapped creatures for the most part. I think I just take uh, Aeronaut even though I'm not super likely to play it. Alright, Pattern Matcher looks excellent with double Smuggler, double Brawler. Other good cards, of course, the Fan Lurker, but we're pretty far away from playing Black. So Pattern Matcher, much better 4-drop than Aeronaut would be here. Well, we could live the dream of Portal plus Agent of Treachery. Don't have any other synergies with it. Other than, I guess, we can attack with a Spitter, and then put it back into our hand before it dies. Digger's not amazing. Uh, usually don't need to main deck Negates. There's like a Dawning Angel that would be okay if we wanted to go white. I think I just take the Portal. Yeah, it's also decent with the Pattern Matcher. Alright, so white is flowing now with the Heralds, Dawning Angel and Griffin. All those cards are excellent, but uh, I think Agent is still probably better than any of these white cards. I don't want to be three color, but I'm not quite sure yet if we're white or blue as our secondary. 
Like all these flyers are fine, but we don't need the evasion from the flying creatures when we have double smuggler to make our brawlers unblockable. So we kind of have that built-in evasion already. But of course it wouldn't hurt to have a couple good flyers. But yeah, like it's basically between an Octoprophet and blue. And taking a, a white card here. Like even if I don't play the Aeronaut, we already have five four drops. Some of them I can potentially ramp out with Amber Capped, which is nice. So that definitely helps. But uh, I don't know if I would have room for an Octoprophet in this deck. It is okay with like a portal as well. Can help me find my agents. So Prophet is definitely a decent card. So gotta outweigh that versus the chances of maybe still ending up in white. In which case, what's the best card here? The four drops are pretty crowded. So maybe Dawning Angel. Don't have many flying creatures to benefit from Heralds. So Angel might just be better in this deck. Yeah, I guess I'll speculate on a Dawning Angel here, I think. Over Heralds. Seeing more good white cards, God's Willing. Don't think we need Act of Treason, Anticipate us, kind of whatever. So maybe we are white after all. Um, don't have any major combos with Fencing Ace, but also don't have any combos with the Raise the Alarm. So, I mean, we can easily end up with like a, a random equipment to make the Fencing Ace worth it. So it's probably better than Raise the Alarm. Nah, not our spitters, decent. Angelic Gift would be nice. So it's between those two. So yeah, at the moment it kind of looks like we might end up red-white after all. I guess uh, spitter's worth it. But then we do need to find more ways to get it in for damage, other than the two smugglers. I mean, smuggler's a good way to do it, of course. But with only two it's not super reliable, so we need like a third smuggler, maybe couple pump spells or hope to get some late angelic gifts to put on my spitter. I think I'll take the gift now over Inspire Charge. If we had more Raise Alarm type stuff we would maybe consider Inspire Charge. But we're not really a go white deck and gift is a pretty nice way to give a brawler or spitter evasion. Don't really want any of these. But I guess I'll take the Assault anyway. Alright. So heading into the last pack. This is kind of our interaction. A reasonable curve of creatures would appreciate a couple more 2s and 3s maybe. And then uh, more Elementals to go with our Brawler and Chandra. But it looks like we're settled into red-white more than blue-red. But who knows, if we open like the Stormkin, I could see switching over to blue-red anyway. Scholar of the Ages is a powerful magic card. But we don't actually have any instants or sorceries in blue-red. So um, we would have to get pretty lucky in this last pack to get enough of them. Mask of Emulation is quite good, synergizes with my uh, Chandra Spitfire especially, it's an elemental for the Brawler. Can maybe sacrifice some tokens from Raise the Alarm to finish off the opponent, so... Mask seems like the pick here, hope to wheel Marauder Sacks maybe. Second pick Registrar, don't see that every day. Um, probably want another Pattern Matcher. And then I'm just not playing the Aeronauts. Anything else worth considering? Marauder Sacks for the most part. Yeah, I don't think we can realistically switch to red-black. I mean, it's not impossible, but we're also giving up on quite a lot if we make that switch. Life Chanter, God's Willing. Angelic Gifts, Assaults, which is our only removal at the moment. Yeah, Pattern Matcher is pretty decent with Double Spitter, Double Smuggler, Double Brawler. Alright, that's the first bow we've seen, I think. So had we taken the Weaponsmith at the start, we would not have really gotten rewarded so far. Protector is the best card for the deck, but it's another 4-drop. So I don't know if we can take it. 
I could take the bow just to deal with one toughness stuff, but it doesn't strike me like a great heart piercer bow deck as we only really have smugglers to make our stuff unblockable. So bow is really at its best if we can put it on a cheap flying creature. So we don't have to worry about the opponent blocking our creatures or on like a skeleton that we can keep getting back from the graveyard. How good is Gauntlets in our deck? It's okay with uh, Lavakin Brawlers, of course. Because then they can deal additional damage while still being able to make them unblockable with the Smuggler. So it's not bad. Also combo with Fencing Ace. And can still smuggle them. So the Gauntlets is actually decent. Sentinel 2 has a lot of synergy. If we didn't have this many 4-drops, I would still take the Griffin over Gauntlets, I think. Given that we do have a lot of 4s already, I think I'm leaning Gauntlets. And yeah, could take another Fencing Ace, although never mind. The Ember Cat is too good in this deck. I have a ton of Elemental Synergy, can ramp out Brawler and Chandra. But would love another Fencing Ace now that we picked up the Gauntlets. Alright, some decent cards here. Reduced Ashes, Dawning Angel. I guess a second Dawning Angel makes a lot of sense when we have double Pattern Matcher. Over Reduced to Ashes. And yeah, Apostle's a great 2 drop too. Seems like the pick. So we could have ended up with a couple Foot Soldiers. I think this might be the third one we've seen so far. Um, took the Raze Alarm over it at the time. Yeah, I guess like a couple foot soldiers might have been better, but then again, Apostle's also very good two drops, so maybe we wouldn't have been able to take it then. Yeah, I guess one Isolation's better than the third Aerial Assault. Wow, another Amber Cat, I'll take it. Card is great. I guess I'll take a foot soldier now, but I don't think we're getting a, a lot of extra ones. Didn't really want any of these. Maybe Inspired Charge, maybe Bird Grabber. These are all pretty marginal. I think we have enough two drops at the moment that I don't need to play these bad ones. All right, wield the bow, still don't think I want it. Alright, wheel the fencing ace, perfect. So now raise the alarm can easily be cut. So I think we ended up with a decent deck. We don't have much removal, but this deck usually doesn't need a lot of removal to function. We're all about just jamming threats that are gonna hit hard and difficult to interact with, thanks to cards like Smuggler. Got card advantage thanks, thanks to Pattern Matcher. Chandra can take care of small stuff. And we've got a bit of extra evasion thanks to the Angelic Gift too. Fencing Ace is excellent with the Gauntlets too. Probably can cut Stone Golem. Um, yeah, these last couple cuts are going to be tough. I like the Sentinel with the Gauntlets too. Gives us a decent blocker. Life Chanter seems okay. Yeah, the Spitfire is not amazing, that's true. It's still good with Scorch Spitter if we can get those attacking. Imagine we have a board with a Spitter, a Smuggler and a Spitfire. Then we can use the Smuggler to make Spitfire unblockable and Spitfire presumably has a good attack and then hits for four. So. The Spitfire is probably still worth it, it's also just an extra elemental for the Lavakin Brawler. So while not amazing, we didn't get any Chandra's Outrages, it's still probably okay. We also have the Mask to kind of do the Wombo Combo finish with the Spitfire. So it's definitely one of our weaker cards, but I think it's probably still worth it. Like at the very least, it's probably better than the Griffin Sentinel, because it still has the three toughness to go with the Gauntlets. Yeah, for cutting one of the, the three mana cards is probably the Sentinel still. But uh, looking at the curve, I kind of like having both. Maybe just cut the Aerial Assaults, or shave one of them. Maybe Isolation's not necessary. 
Apostle's usually quite good since black is a pretty popular color. I think Mask, while not amazing, is probably still okay. Just as an extra elemental for the Brawler. Can um, finish off one toughness creatures that can combine with combat damage to maybe kill something bigger. There's a bunch of enchantment based removal spells where we can still get value out of our creatures with the mask. So it's it's definitely a card that on the surface might not seem amazing, but in practice it does a lot more than you might think. Can also just help us burn out an opponent. Like once they're at four or five life, we can just start sacrificing all our creatures to get in those last points. And it also has great synergy with the Spitfire, so I don't think we can cut a mask. Maybe I do cut the Griffin anyway. As one of our weaker creatures. I want to keep all the pairs to go with the Pattern Matcher, which also seems amazing in this deck. Double Spitfire, double Ace, triple Embercat, double Smuggler, double Brawler. Double Dawning Angel too, so a great Pattern Matcher deck. Yeah, I think I might just cut the Assaults. Just because we're going to be the aggressor in most matchups. There's definitely situations where this can be quite good, but I think on average this is going to be kind of bad. And then Isolation is better since we can use it even if the opponent's on blocking duty. But it is also still a pretty narrow card. The Life Chandra is potentially cuttable too, just because our curve is kind of low. And we shouldn't need the Life Chanter to win, but then again, it is a nice, big, uh, stabilizing creature. If we're behind, we can take a bit of damage and then use the Life Chanter to gain life. And uh, if we're the aggressor, then we're usually going to have a lot of life, and then the Life Chanter just turns into an enormous threat that the opponent is forced to chum block or somehow deal with. And we can also ramp it out with the Chandra, which is also worth mentioning. Although then it's kind of awkward to use the ability if we use Chandra to ramp because we might not have 6 mana to use the ability at instant speed. So maybe I do cut Isolation. Is there a world where we can get away with 16 lands in this deck? I don't have a ton of mana sinks. And I do have Chandra that can make mana. And the Amber Cats that also ramp into Chandra, so... This could be a 16 lander. Because we didn't end up with any equipment outside of the mask. So we don't have a lot of ways to spend our extra mana in the late game. We only have Pattern Matcher to virtually draw additional cards. So this might be a 16 land deck. Would have loved to pick up a dual lands. But uh, I think uh, we can still get away with it. If we didn't have triple Ambercat, double Chandra, then playing 16 would be a lot sketchier. But I think with Ambercat and Chandra it's probably okay. Because some amount of the time... These cards are basically going to be three drops. And then our curve looks a lot better. So, probably cut an isolation. And uh, hope that we won't need it. And then the mana distribution definitely need at least nine mountains to make these Ember Cats uh, function and a spitter. Could even go 10 6. Don't need a ton of whites. Most of it is late game with Angel and Life Chanter. A couple of them are early. So it's between 10 6, 9 7, I think. Alright, hand looks quite good. I will eventually need a fourth land, but we have a lot of uh, draw steps to get there. Can match the fencing ace. Ooh, nice. Ooh, a perfect curve. If we can uh, hit land four. We're going to have the dream curve here. Opponent not doing anything so far. Already down to 12 and now we can start using Smuggler if they put up a good blocker. Sure. Alright. At least Ambercat can help me play Chandra next turn if I want to.
Alright, War Chief is a decent blocker. It's also going to start growing if we um, keep attacking them, but that's okay. So I can go Chandra, make mana, play Amber Cats. Although that's going to leave Chandra pretty vulnerable. Could also play Chandra. Yeah, make Spitter unblockable and then plus and then attack. And this is basically going to hit for four. Chandra will be at six, so it shouldn't die to one War Chief attack. I could also attack with all, but this is going to be a 5-5, five five, so the two damage from Chandra is not going to be enough to finish it off. So yeah, that doesn't really work. Yeah, I think I like this. And even if they do attack Chandra, they're going to lose a valuable blocker. And that servant as a 3-2. Sure. Yeah, there's a couple cards that are worded to where they get the counter end of turn. The War Chief gets it right away, apparently. Alright, so can we kill them? Probably not. Can use Chandra to pump my elementals. Which let's see here. Four. So it's essentially six. Everyone attacks. So if they block here, then they would still be taking five down to one. So it would be very close to that. If I smuggled the Amber Cat and then plus Chandra, then they're still forced to block Spitter, and that's a trade I'm okay to make. And then I can still play Pattern Matcher as well to get another smuggler. That seems pretty good. Don't really see how we lose from there. <laughs> Time to turn up the heat. So there are two, Chandra's lethal by herself. I've got double smuggler. And yeah, that's gonna do it. We had an excellent start. Missed the fourth land drop, but we were still easily able to keep up the pressure. You can see in that game, for example, if we had a, an aerial assault, it would not have been very good uh, when we're the ones trying to pressure the opponent. Yeah, this is excellent. Turn 3 Chandra. Thanks to the Amber Cats. Alright, I guess we'll have to wait a turn. but my opponent is stuck on two lands. We'll keep our second color hidden for now. Alright, double sorcerer. So, what are we doing? Just play Chandra. Use a mana to play another Amber Cats. Could be fine. And then next turn I can start plussing to pump the Amber Cats. And then we're just waiting for a good creature to copy with our pattern matcher. 
since we've uh, drawn all the amber cats. All right, heart piercer bow. Fair enough. That's pretty good too. So I was going to pump my amber cats with Chandra. Now I might want to just ramp out this life chanter instead. And I probably still want to play my lands. I want to keep some in hand potentially for discard from the opponent. But um, we'll decline here. But I also want to be able to potentially use the ability on the life chanter next turn if we draw lands. Got to watch out for blade brands potentially killing the life chanter. So they can still have answers for two mana. Okay. I see. I haven't seen this use of indenture yet, to be honest. Putting it on the opponent's creature and then trying to kill it. That's pretty original. Ooh, Angelic Gift. Sadly, we don't have double white, so I can't gift and uh, use the ability. But I guess we could draw into a white source, and then it would work. White mana for the win. Oh. Alright, so now... I guess we just pump the Amber Cats and attack. Well, if they can kill the life chanter here, we could be in a bit of trouble. Maybe uh, the one mana sacrifice a creature, destroy a creature. But they don't have the white mana to activate uh, the life chanter anyway, so it's just a big blocker. I guess up to 10 here since it gets a plus one counter. Well, it does block my stuff, so we don't really get to attack past it here. If we find a smuggler, we're in great shape. Otherwise, we can just use Chandra to maybe burn them out. I guess I can kill my spitter here. Hey, that hurt. Well, that was a good turn for them, for sure. And yeah, the, that one extra counter on the life chanter is actually pretty important. Because otherwise I could have attacked after pumping and then used my second chanter to finish off the life chanter. Now I'm one damage short. Pattern matcher can match anything. Do we just play this pattern matcher as a 3 3? So that next turn I can maybe double minus chandra to get life chanter? I guess so. Yeah, the, the thing with giving the Amber Cat flying last turn, my opponent could have maybe been relying on a Blade Brand to kill my Life Chanter instead of a Bone Splinters. They could have been waiting for double black for murder, which they might not have drawn. And if I drew white mana off the enchantment here, then I could have won the game on the spot, because then Chandra made two mana and I could use the ability and kill them on the spot. So I think it was worth it to give Life Chanter flying, but of course it didn't work out here. So, yeah, let's use this pattern matcher. And then just uh, start minusing Chandra maybe on their face. Or I could just plus first. Because if I minus now, then next turn I don't have the option to minus, and I might want to set that up so that I can, for example, attack with pattern matcher if they block minus and then minus again. Let's burn brighter. Now we'll keep land in hand, I think. In case of a fun lurker from the opponents. They could use Manifold Key to make Life Chanter unblockable, but then they're very vulnerable on the way back. So I don't think that's happening. Alright, they're doing it, so now they're gonna get punished pretty hard. Because they can play a second Chandra. 
pump the amber cats and that's gonna hit them for enough to force them to chomp. And then Chandra doesn't even die to the life chanter if they try and attack it. It's probably not a huge downside to playing out a land at this point. So yeah, the indenture was definitely an interesting play this game. Because my opponent playing it definitely indicates that they have a way to kill the life chanter, but we didn't know exactly what removal spell it was going to be. Which made it more interesting. But I think giving ourselves the out of just winning the game on the spot there, if we draw one of our six remaining planes, was probably worth it. And yeah, opponent comes to the conclusion that they're dead. On the play, with um, a hand that's missing white, but it is... A pretty decent start with Spitter into Ambercat. We've got a ton of 4-mana plays that Ambercat can ramp into. And if we do find white mana, then we've got some decent follow-ups. So the worst draws here would be basic mountains. Got uh, six of those left in the deck, so hopefully we don't draw those too soon. But everything else, outside of more white cards, I guess, should be fine pickups. Nice, so turn 3 Chandra coming up. Alright, so Spitter attacks. Hopefully they block and then I can use Chandra to finish off the Leafkin. And if they take it, I'm still just going to play Chandra. Potentially missed out on two damage. But giving ourselves a chance of potentially killing Leafkin is probably worth it. Alright, it's a plus. And then I could end up using God's Willing here just to keep my Amber Cat alive. I think that's worth it. Alright, so we've got an excellent start here, showing off the power of Ambercat and Chandra. But if they have another big blocker, we're not necessarily going to be able to make uh, great attacks. Lynx is fine. And a season. Alright, the sequencing there was a little strange. They probably wanted to season first to get this cry. Can potentially activate the Apostle, probably doesn't matter too much here, but uh, might as well do it. Gift to gain three. And yeah, that's gonna do it. So far so good. Alright, now we've got a bit of a sketchy one, 
only two lands, but we are on the draw. Problem is these pattern matchers don't have anything to copy. That's uh, cheap here, just a Dawning Angel at five. Yeah, these are basically all the expensive cards in the deck. Let's uh, go to six, this is much better. But which card to put on the bottom? I wish I could keep everything, the sand's perfect. Definitely want to keep Amber Cats and Chandra. I mean, Smuggler's super powerful with the Brawler too. And Brawler's great with Chandra and Smuggler. Do I just put a Planes on the bottom and get greedy? I guess so. I mean, we are on the draw, which definitely helps. Alright, this is maybe ill-advised, but uh, we'll try it. If we find another Amber Cat, that's also still a reasonable draw here. Alright. Always had it. Hopefully Chandra can uh, take out any potential bow wielders. Alright, that's uh, a nice one to kill here. And we're in great shape here. Opponent sits back. Could have a convolute. Don't know if we really want to be playing around it. So could go Brawler plus another Amber Cat. That seems pretty good. I guess I can also go Brawler plus Smuggler if I use Amber Cat for mana. But it's probably more efficient to just go Amber Cat plus Brawler attack for two. Let's do that. Because next turn then I can plus Chandra to pump all my elementals. And uh, Smuggler has haste anyway. So... Let's do this. I guess this doesn't play around Convolutes. Unless I tap the Amber Cats. Convolute is unless you pay 4. So they could Convolute this anyway. Alright, they had it. If we wanted to play around Convolute, we could have just played more cheap cards. But there was no way to have a 4 mana left over to pay for the Convolute. Alright, Mask is pretty good too. I could kill Octoprophet using Mask and Chandra, but losing Chandra is pretty bad. But I guess I'm also not in a great spot to necessarily save Chandra. So what about just plussing, and then I can just play Fencing Ace and Mask on defense. Also, that are somewhat likely to also want to trade. And then I do have the option of just jumping with the Mask as well. They could of course equip the bow, but then I can jump with my other creature and then they're taking a ton of damage on the way back. But otherwise, I could just like chum block Octo Prophet and ping them for one. Sir so does equip the bow. We'll see what they do here. Probably kills the ace. So now we'll block. And then ping them for one. And then they could just be dead if they don't have another blocker, but. Uh, We'll see. Alright, they do have a cutthroat on defense. Should still be able to finish them off here, so let's see. Chandra pumps Amber Cats. Mask is how much to equip? Two. So if I pump Amber Cats, my opponent is forced to trade for the cutthroats. And it also leaves Chandra out of range of the Octoprophet killing it. If I play Smuggler with haste, attack with everyone after pumping then they would also still be forced to block on Amber Cats. So they would take 6 down to 3. So I guess it also works. Oh 
because if they don't block an Amber Cat, then we can equip the mask and burn them out. We didn't play the land first, so we're potentially giving them a chance to mess up here, but of course, the next turn they would be dead to the mask. And then what do we equip is a question. What's more likely to be killed by my opponents? I mean, they're both pretty valuable. I'm guessing the Amber Cat is more valuable at the moment. Because if they kill the Amber Cat, then the Smuggler is just a 2-2. Whereas Amber Cat is potentially bigger with Chandra. And yeah, that does it. So the Convolute took a bit of the wind out of our sails, but um, could have potentially played around it a little bit better. We kind of forced them to have it, they had it, but we still were able to win pretty easily. All right, so we're on the draw with a pretty decent looking hand. I'm thinking Fencing Ace can probably go here. And Apostle seems quite good against someone playing black. Right, Lynx can tap it down. So now I don't have a great attack with my Goblin Smuggler. So we'll probably go Spitter plus Mask, and then next turn Chandra can also pump them up. Sure, I'll take it. So how do we want to sequence things here? Both on top. And Jelly Gift isn't bad. So I've got a lot of options. I could just attack with my red creatures. They'll maybe block and then I can use Chandra to finish it off. But then the Lynx still threatens my Chandra and I don't want to have to block with my Apostle. I guess I could just let it take two. I could Chandra pump and then just hit them for a bunch. But then Chandra is also going to take a beating on the way back. She would be at 6, so she wouldn't be necessarily taking lethal. So maybe it's still okay. Alright, got the trade, pretty happy with that. The ability on the Apostle is also quite relevant in this matchup, as uh, they usually have some form of graveyard recursion, like a Soul Salvage, that we can potentially prevent. Don't quite get this attack. Sure. Alright, so have a lot of options now. Don't really need to minus on the Blood Burglar since the Apostle is just blanking it. So I could just plus attack with the Spitter, then I guess they're likely to trade the Blood Burglar, but that's a good deal. Or I could wait and play the Spitfire first, since Spitfire plus Spitter plus Mask is quite a combo too. And then just for now I can, I guess, minus on the Frost Links. I kind of like that idea. Play Spitfire, minus on Lynx. 
And then next turn maybe set up a big attack. And then Angelic Gift on the Spitter can potentially provide a steady clock with the Spitfire as well. Downside of minusing Chandra is that now if I want to minus again, I will lose Chandra. The upside is that if they somehow dealt with the Spitfire, I'm not in an awkward spot where I uh, would have to block with my Apostle to keep Chandra alive. They did have the Soul Salvage, sadly we didn't have enough mana to exile something with Apostle. So let's see what they tap down with the Lynx, presumably Spitfire. It's gonna be Apostle instead, fair enough. I could have maybe expected them to have the Soul Salvage in hand, given how aggressively they traded off the Octoprophet at the start of the game. But that's okay. So can I kill my opponents? Could definitely get pretty close. So if this pumps Elementals, I could... Angelic Gift the Spitter, and then Mask on Apostle would be another 3 damage. So I don't think it's quite lethal. I guess see what we draw first. Just a land. Yeah, I think I'm still okay attacking. And then just play a smuggler on defense. And then next turn the Spitfire is uh, threatening to just kill them. And yeah, my opponent uh, can't really fight this. So yeah, the Apostle did a ton of work this game too. Alright, beautiful hands. Need a land number three for this to really work out perfectly. Haven't had the uh, gauntlets show up yet. Not the best hand for the gauntlets as we don't have a high toughness creature or the double striker, but uh, let's get in for two. And hope for a land. Perfect. Yeah, turn 3 Chandra feels pretty unfair. No. Right. Brontodon is a pretty good blocker. So now what? Yeah, the, the plus from Chandra wouldn't really work with the gauntlets. So I'm probably better off using Chandra for mana, play Pattern Matcher. And then I could get another Amber Cat and then play it right away using the first Amber Cat. Seems okay. Pattern Matcher, of course, an artifact, so they can destroy it with the Brontodon, but then they don't have a Brontodon, so that works for me. Yeah, that's a good one. Siphon the Pattern Matcher, but they're not attacking Chandra. Alright, got a lot of options once again. So now Plusing Chandra lets the Amber Cats attack profitably, and I could also use Smuggler to let the Spitter attack. And if they take it and try and kill Chandra on the way back, we've got a follow-up, so that seems good. Gotta do this first, and then plus... This is a lot of damage. So they might 
just be forced to trade. They take it down to 7. Chandra down. They're not gonna like the second Chandra. I think they're just dead here. And that'll do it. Well, that was a pretty ridiculous draw. Alright, time for the final boss. This went by pretty quickly. But uh, yeah, Chandra's one hell of a card. And Triple Ember Cat to speed it up makes it even better. On the play with another beautiful Chandra hands. Yeah, we'll just need to find land 3 and then we're good to go. We're on the play this time, so we only have two draw steps to find it, but uh, gotta believe. Mountain? Uh oh, looks like my opponent has a shock in hand. Hmm. Well, if they shock my Ember Cat, this hand falls apart. Is there any world where I don't play Ember Cat here? Just to throw off their curve? Because imagine they have a shock in hand, then they get to shock it on land step. If I wait, then they might have a 2-drop, and then they don't get to shock my Ember Cat if they want to play a 3-drop on curve. So there is a world where it makes sense not to play Ember Cat turn 2, but um, I think we have to make him show it still. And there it is. Don't think there's anything else that would pass for one mana. Alright, opponent didn't have a 2-drop, so if we did wait, then they would have been able to shock regardless. And yeah, no third land, so I guess we wouldn't have been able to do much with the Ember Cat anyway, but now we need two lands to play Chandra. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. They could have red removal to take care of it, but at least it can get murdered or siphoned. Alright, double shock. Shock is good against her deck since it kills her early Ember Cats. Speak of the devil. Luckily my opponent hasn't been pressuring us. <laughs> Alright. Alder removal. Well, at least this one deals one damage if they kill it. Alright, that's a good one. Yeah, that's uh, not great. A little bit too long without drawing a land now. Could use God's Willing just to scry. But that seems like a pretty bad use of the card. Bag of Holding is also gonna win them the late game. So... It's not looking good. Maybe I'm supposed to just block and scry here. Sure. Feels bad, but... It's basically game 3, scry 1. Yeah, and don't think Ambercat's good enough. I think I just want lands at this point. Does uh, remove the mask, which is pretty funny. Still nothing. Alright. Opponent got rid of a Dracoseth, so we've got that to look forward to. If we still had the mask equipped, then we could let first strike damage happen and then sag the elemental to kill the burglar. Well, I guess it was not meant to be. I 
think this is game over. Can't really come back from this. And just to rub it in. So yeah, Gauntlets would make this a 1-3. Still doesn't really uh, block enough here. And if we play Smuggler, I can block a zombie, chump a necromancer. Or I guess even block a necromancer, chump a necromancer, finish off a necromancer. Take 5, 6, 7. I guess I'm not dead on board, but probably still lose on the next turn. Well, I guess they had all the shocks here. So our Amber Cats were never really destined for a long life. Alright, GG's. Alright, on the draw. We've got two of our expensive white cards, but we do also have turn two Amber Cat into turn three Brawler, so gotta keep. The upside of being on the draw here is that we get to play our spitter turn one. Let's get in there. And Pattern Matcher is pretty good, can copy the Amber Cats or the Brawler. So ideally we can go turn three Brawler and then play a Pattern Matcher to get a second copy. Right. I think that's still the plan here. Red green. Crasher. Alright, that trades for my brawler, so it's pretty good here. Although never mind. Now we can make brawler unblockable. Hits for five. They do get an attack now with the Sentinel. The Crasher might also get in there. Don't necessarily want to initiate a race when we have these powerful late game tools available, so I might hit the brakes next turn, we'll see. Alright, reduce, that's a pretty good one. So, also reduces the amount of uh, targets for Pattern Matcher. They're not willing to trade Sentinel for Embercat, that's kind of strange. Maybe they have an overrun effect in hand, that would explain that decision. Would also be reasonable to double block the Crasher. If we draw Chandra, we'll regret it. Uh, if I draw Lance, I can just play it and get another Smuggler. So I'm actually okay trading Spitter and Embercat for Crasher here, just because we have all these good late game cards. So I'm not necessarily looking to aggro them out. And two for wanting myself doesn't seem too bad when we have a pattern matcher as well. Alright, that's a good draw. So now we'll match. I mean, I could wait to maybe pattern match the Dawning Angel if we want to get greedy. Doesn't seem necessary. But I'm not going to offer the trade here for Smuggler. Next turn, if I don't draw land, I can smuggle the smuggler. Alright, 
I'm okay trading matcher for sentinel and the elemental token. Right, they had a pump spell instead, fair enough. Right, let's uh, smuggle the smuggler and play spitter. And I could be okay racing because I have the life chanter in hand, which can regain me a bunch of life afterwards. Spitter does die to the mask, but don't really have a great use for Spitter in hand either, so... Alright, that's a good one. One smuggler down. So now we don't really get to make any great attacks. My own mask, uh, not particularly helpful. I guess Ember Cat plus mask can trade for a golem. But we still have some nice leftovers in hand. All right, that's reduced. I shall make the unblockable The elemental token will remember the brave gesture from the smuggler here. Yeah, I think I'm down to just double block. Alright, so we get to Player Angel. Four turn clock in the air. They probably should equip the mask if they're not doing anything else. Gonna decline to switch your life total. And Life Chanter next turn is a forced chum block as it can hit for a lot of damages. And my opponent's just gonna explode. Alright, sweet. So, got to win with our first pick in the last uh, game here. So, yeah, lost a game where we got stuck on two lands, but everything else was pretty smooth sailing, so our deck definitely performed. Double Chandra tends to do that. Crack some packs. Risen Reef, a nice one. Nice mythic wild cards turned into 40 gems. Alright, sweet. Wanna thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.